Hi there, it's Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. Okay, um, I wanted to go back and touch on one of the subjects of um, my school years. Now, in the video, in one of the previous videos, I was talking about looking back on my years in primary school. It seemed like such a lonely childhood, you know, um, because all through school, I think for a year there, I tried to make a friend and, we, you know, we were good friends and then it just all fell apart. And it's in the book. It's not something that's, you know, super important to touch on at the moment, but I wanted to go back to that. It seemed like such a lonely time, you know, because I'd spend six hours of the day at school with no friends. You know, I didn't interact with any of the other children. When I was younger, in kindy and year one, I tried, but I felt like I had nothing in common with them. Like we weren't talking the same language, even though I knew how to speak English very well. <laughs> it wasn't a barrier, but just what they were interested in were not things that I was interested in at all. You know, if you got together with little girls, all they did was criticize other little girls, you know, or judge other little girls for how they looked or their hair or their, whatever it was. There was always something that they were picking on it. It was gossip, you know, it was just this talking about other people. And I wasn't used to that, you know, because at church they taught us not to gossip, not to talk badly about other people, you know, not to judge others. You know, when you yourself, you've got so many faults, you know, that you've got no right to be judging others. So. I didn't know how to have those conversations with these girls. And with boys, for some reason, they just wanted to do their boy things and they weren't interested in girls, you know, in kindy and year one. So I found myself in my own little world, you know, and fortunately for me, I was in love with learning and with reading. And, you know, you'd get a book and it would just take you off to this wonderful place. Sometimes it was a wonderful place. Sometimes it was a scary place, but it transported you to another world in your mind, you know, in your imagination. You got to actually leave where you were and just travel to all these wonderful, magical places. Because I used to love stories about fairies and wizards and all these, you know, dragons, all those sorts of stories and magical stories. So, Many times I was off with the fairies, quite literally, you know, in my books. <laughs> but I think what I gained from those years was firstly, I kind of lived in my own little world. I lived in my own little bubble. And I want to clarify here that I was so happy. Never in those years, I look back on it, and never in those years did I feel like I missed out on anything because I didn't have a bunch of friends, you know, to play with or, I don't feel like that was missing in my life. You know, on weekends I had my cousins and we used to play and we never talked about anyone else. We just used to be goofy and have fun and we just wanted to be in that moment together because we hadn't seen each other all week. So I knew what it was to be with someone else and to just want to have fun, you know, and just want to be together and share our love for each other and admire each other for how beautiful we all were to each other you know in different ways but we all thought I honestly thought all my cousins were you know just so beautiful in my eyes each and every one of them was so special to me and you know they made my childhood magical and I had that on weekends so I knew what that was and we all had so much in common you know so much in common because all of our dads had come to a country where they didn't know the language you know, and they were struggling to make ends meet and to learn this new language and to learn how things worked here in Australia. And so our parents were all going through the same. And so we were all going through the same and what we were feeling. And many of my cousins, we were all firstborns. And so, and we all had a second sibling, all of us. So, you know, we absolutely knew what it felt like to be the firstborn and what parents expect of you when you're the firstborn and all these things, you know? So it was magical. I had the most wonderful childhood. But what I wanted to share in this video was those years, those seven years that I had at school, 
I'd say six because there was one whole year where I did try to make a friend when I was moved to Catholic school. I just felt that I needed something outside of where my mind had gone to at that time because it had gone to a very dark place in that one year that I was in Catholic school. Uh, that's another topic for another video. I may have touched on it previously. It is definitely in my book if you want to read all about that. <laughs> um, anyway, so this one year I needed someone to be with me at school, that I would feel safe. But for those other six years that I was in primary school and I was with these books and I was traveling to all these magical places, I learned to be in my own company. I learned to be comfortable with just being with myself, not needing to have someone else with me. And I think that is so important for each and every one of us that we are comfortable in our own company. We're comfortable with who we are, that we don't feel the need to have to have other people making noise around us so that we don't feel lonely or we don't feel that there's something missing. We can just sit with ourselves and be quite at peace with being on our own. You know, I really treasured those years. I really loved them. You know, I never had bad thoughts going on in my head you know in those years that I was in public school and I had that time to myself without distractions of what the girls were talking about or what the boys were doing or all that other stuff I got to actually enjoy all those years of discovering who I was and being comfortable with who I was you know and I was very lucky because I look back on it and my dad allowed me to be just who I was. I didn't need to prove myself to him. His love was unconditional. It was in my life, it's always been a rock, a solid rock that I can always, you know, rely on, that that love is there. No matter what I do, no matter how much I mess up or how much, you know, how many mistakes I make or what I look like, what I wear, what I own, what I do, what I don't do, he sees me for who I am. You know, the little spirit inside, not what's out here, but that little spirit that he brought into this world. He could see that the day I was born. I look at this photo, you know, of the day I was born and they've gone to christen me. They took me to church and I was baptized. And the expression on his face, it was all lit up inside for love, for this tiny little creature that he was holding. And he has never stopped looking at me that way. Never. To this day, his face lights up whenever he sees me. And I feel that love. I feel that I'm special and that, you know, I was so important to him, that I was worth something to him. So anyway, in the next video, I want to talk about those of us who don't have even that one adult to do that for us, to help us to see who we really are and to be comfortable with who we are, just as we are. Okay, my darlings, I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.